you always wanted to see if you could beat the 60% odds of a single shot pistol? Well, look no further because I have the answer for you. My Tactical Black Powder Pistol Program, or TBP3. For only $3,999, I can show you like basically two moves on dealing with this pistol that's most likely not gonna work in the first place. Or blow up your hand. Zombie, good day to die. So in the last couple of years, I realized that I am uncomfortable around firearms, even though I grew up around them. And so I've been working towards just learning more and more about them. That was holding me back in training purposes and safety and all sorts of things. So uh, I felt I needed to be better. So here we are with the Philadelphia 44 caliber Derringer. This is what I started out with. I'm just kidding. That's not what I started out with. <laughs> this thing is like super complicated. Um, and I really like things simple, so. So in regards to black powder, my family is the, uh, to put it in the acronym, the F-A-F-O type of people. Today we're going to talk not necessarily about self-defense, although more on the historical side, you know, when women liked to carry a Derringer, which is what this one was, because it was small and compact and could be hidden in a purse or, you know, like in the movies where they show, oh, I've got a stocking, which that is, I'm just letting you know, like holding a gun in a stocking is a lot harder than it looks and honestly really unsafe, but you know what, this gun isn't all that safe anyway. So. This is a replica of the black powder pistol that John Wilkes Booth used to kill Abraham Lincoln. So this is a single shot. Yeah, you shoot one, and then if you didn't have any others, I guess you flip it around and you hit them with it. Um, I mean, that would be my plan. This is actually a really pretty gun. Um, if you look right here, see how neat that is, it says. It's really pretty, all fancy schmancy. So the term half cocked means that when you have your gun, the rudimentary safety feature, that was a quote, and also this is the prime position for putting on your percussion cap. So you would pop this half cocked, slide your little percussion cap on, which when you think about it, this is kind of the dangerous position of when you've loaded the gun because it's already loaded and now at the very last, you wanna put your percussion cap on and then you just wanna leave it here. And while you're doing this, you wanna be really careful, hence the term, you don't wanna go running in there half cocked. You know, um, is basically the whole concept of, you know, just run around all willy-nilly or um, can't really think of any of these. You cannot pull the trigger, though, when it is half-cocked at all. And uh, so, and it's hard to push it down. So I guess, I mean, just, you're thinking, man, just hanging out in your pocket just seems like a terrible idea when it's all just logged and loaded and ready to go, but... I guess you would take it and you'd be like, hey, bad guy. Or maybe you'd probably just do it silently. I mean, this is like, the Derringer was considered the assassin's gun, obviously, for, you know, main historical reasons that we all know about. But ideally, I'm thinking that if I'm sneaking up behind somebody, I'm already going to have it, you know, I'm already going to have that done because this is really kind of hard to do. You're going to pull all the way back. But let's just see from here. Be like, listen, in the movies, they're always doing that. Uh, now I'm gonna. The Derringer is named after the gunsmith Henry Derringer, best known for giving his name to the Derringer pistol. Um, except there's only one R in his name. Um, after the Lincoln assassination, which John Wilkes Booth used this model to shoot Abraham Lincoln, the media screwed up the spelling of Henry Derringer's name. Shocker, I know. Basically, the two R's went on in infamy, but Henry Derringer actually only had one R in his name. The term Derringer is now basically any tiny handgun that's not a revolver or fully automatic pistol. It's pretty much the smallest handgun that you can buy. So there's a lot of modern ones that you can get nowadays. Historically, they would be bought in pairs for dueling purposes when, you know, we can't fight back as women. So I guess our honor was at stake. 
It's pretty much impossible to find original Derringers in their pairs now, hence the desire that people have for these kits. But my dad bought his in 1980 for the sole purpose of owning a black powder gun. He had four kids and he was working nights and apparently he still wanted a weird hobby, so he bought this kit. Although here I am doing a video on it 30 years later, so what does that say about me? The kit was the cheapest way he could go about buying and owning a black powder pistol. I think he bought this, he said, for around $30. They are totally not that today. An average black powder pistol kit today is around $200 plus. If you can find them, because it seems they're about as available as current day ammo. So I spoke to a really nice man who works for Traditions Firearms and wanted to ask him about what the requirements were for buying a black powder kit now. I guess 30 years ago, there was no minimum age requirement for that and you could just go and buy your kid of course probably you know not online but still you could just walk into your local walmart i guess and buy a black powder buy a good kit and i called to ask the age and he said which i don't understand the reasoning behind this but to buy a black powder rifle you had to be only 18 but to buy the black powder pistol kit you had to be 21 so i don't understand what that was the interesting thing about that when i talked with him is they are basically out of stock on everything like everything. Apparently with all the things that are going on in the world right now, the black powder industry is rolling just as well as the rest of the firearm businesses out there. You are looking for a 30 to 90 day wait list to buy the kit for a black powder rifle and you're looking at 90 to 150 for a black powder pistol kit. Which really makes me wonder if people are really stocking up for the apocalypse with black powder and if they really just do understand how ridiculously complicated and inaccurate these things are. I mean, it literally takes like a minute to reload one of these things if you're good at it. So what we're dealing with with the ammo shortage and all of that good stuff and now all the black powder pistols are being bought up. Um, I would say though that with a single shot, for a zombie apocalypse, this probably isn't the best uh, zombie fighting gun that I can think of. I mean, I bet though, if we had the bayonets, then you just cut the heads off. I really should have my dad here, so um, don't take my word for any of this. So this is my dad. I uh, come by the RBF, honestly, if you can tell. You, uh, which I'm aiming at him. <laughs> good times, good thing it's only a single shot. Um, musket ball and Apparently that's what this other thing is for. I don't know what that is. But he's gonna explain a it a little. Setter. Okay, he's gonna fix it all better. So, so I'm messing it up. Put the powder in, and then you would take the ball setter, and if there was powder in there, then you would go ahead and set the ball by pushing it down real hard. So so that it's like that. And then you would take loader and rod and just push it on down until it stops. And you just as hard as you can. And you're loaded. Uh, what did you call this? Half cocked. Half cocked. So, and set. it would just hang out in your pocket just like that. Hang out in your pocket just like that. Seems safe. No, but by today's standards, no. But by yesterday's standards, uh, yeah, it's the best you had. So much black powder are we going to put in here because what, are we just going to take like a teaspoon and just dump it down the barrel, right? No, nope, it's 20 to 30 grains by measurement. What does that even mean? Apparently, this is the tool we're going to use. So each one of these graduates is five grains. Grains of what? It's grains of weight. You have to show the camera how so you're setting it, Dad. This actually sets right there. It would be out of here, into here, till it's full, into here, and your measured amount's right. Any excess powder that you have, if you pour it in too much, it's just going to blow out the end of the barrel and sparkle a little bit. And if you don't put enough in there, you won't have enough to push the ball out, and then you have a misfire. So, you really can't overload them. Oh, well that's good to know. But what he was saying, how you do this here is this sucker unscrews right here and it tells you from this end in there, it goes back and forth from there and you would find your measurement for whichever gun you're going for. So if it did misfire, is it still fairly safe? I mean, is it something if it did misfire, is it totally not loaded? You could look down the end of it or something like that. Or is yeah, that if it misfired, you just pull it back, pop the cap off, and you got two choices. The first one is take this nipple out, drop a little powder in behind it, 
put the nipple back on, put a cap on it, and try to fire it. If it doesn't go off that way, the only resort you have, usually these will come with a threaded, so you can put a screw on there, screw it into the ball, and pull the whole ball out, and you dump the powder out and start over. So, wait, bad guy. Gotta fix my gun. No, if it's bad guy, it's... <laughs> so, basically what he was saying is about a half a teaspoon of black powder on this particular gun. So, black powder. This is the black powder, one of them that my dad buys. Two of these. This one actually is for the rifle one. Uh, we actually used this on Christmas Day when we were shooting them, so I guess they kind of work interchangeably. Don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure, but we did use both. Um, it is very important for you to understand that you do not want to use modern smokeless black powder in any of these because apparently, I guess, it'll just blow your gun up. So this is uh, the modern smokeless one, so I guess that's a big no-no. Surprisingly, I don't know if it's just me, but this stuff, black powder kind of has a mint smell to it, which is kind of strange. Yeah, it's super weird. Um, it's kind of nice. So you have all of these little deals. This is one my dad actually made. It's really pretty. He's a talented guy. He made the gun. He has a little black powder deal here. I don't understand what all this does, so I'm not going to take it out. But look how pretty this is. See? So you would take this, and we're not going to do it all, but you would dump the black powder that was measured out, which I have no idea how that works. So whatever, it had to be a certain amount. So then you would take your musket ball, put it in your little round bit of wadding, and then you would stick it right here, in here. Again, don't take my word on all of this, and you'd use one of these handy dandy little tools, and you'd mash that sucker down in there, and then you would pop your percussion cap on. One second. Hmm. And then very gently let it down. This is what the percussion cap looks like. It's like this tiny little thing. This is basically made of the same stuff that you have those snappers at, 4th of July, um, that you throw on the ground and they pop. I think uh, some of them were made of mercury. I'm not really sure if that's what they're made of anymore now. This is a ball sack. No, but really. It has, um, they would carry these around on their little belt loops and then it would have all sorts of stuff in here which is basically all your little musket balls See? so this is what they would use as their speed loader you would shove the ball in there like so da, 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 da. here's the wadding and here is the musket ball you know i was just thinking that with this ammo shortage you know we could might have to resort, probably very similar to that Patriot video, and we'd all be melting down our little tin soldiers. But you take this and you um, stick it in this wood rack, and you just press it in very much like that, and it goes in there. My dad did it a little bit better than I did. Um, twist it around, and then after you'd put that stuff in there, you would just, here's your speed loader, hammer that down in there, Pull it back, put your percussion cap on it, go boom. In order to carry these around to where they were always ready to shoot, this half cock thing is uh, your safety feature. Actually, there's two safety features because after you fire the gun, there's nothing else that's gonna happen. This seems really, I mean, this was, this was the thing of the day, but this seems very, uh, not safe in my opinion, but whatever. And then you would shove it in your pocket because that's what the Derringers were known for, is being small. And then when you were ready to fire your gun, you would pull it all the way back like this. And then you would hit the percussion cap and poof. Built-in safety for this gun that maybe didn't work like 30% of the time. So no tap rack pull here, it's more like well, I don't know what it would be, but, you know, unload the bastard and then blow on it, basically, like you would a 1980s Nintendo game is what I'm thinking. I have actually shot this gun before. This video here, I was dressed up from Christmas and my friend had come into town. So my dad was showing her this Derringer and I had absolutely no idea what to expect. There we go.
I look like I'm closing my eyes here and just hoping for the best, which, I mean, that likely was the truth. However, I was attempting to aim. I didn't hit it um, at this target across the pond. It was very much pointed out in that video that I had bad form. Again, didn't know what to expect. But I decided that when I go shoot it this time, we're gonna do it how they would have done it. In basically how it was depicted in all of the paintings and the pictures of the time. So this is for you, Aaron. Gonna kill some zombies today. Boom. So now we know. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our black powder and I got this handy dandy little thing. We're gonna open the spring up. I'm gonna tump it over. This is our very awesome way of measuring things. Grab it over, make sure I got some fun stuff in there. Dump it in the little barrel. Um, this is kind of a cheat. These are little felt round discs. I'm gonna put these in here. Pop that on the end. All pretty like. Take one of our little balls. We're gonna pop it in right there. And shove it all the way down. Really, really hard. Half cocked. Pop on this fun little percussion cap right here. And we are good to go. Half cocked. So we've got our half cocked pistol right here. Got a dagger in my left hand because in all of the pictures depicted, they always stood like this in case the shot didn't go off. Um, I've done this take like six times and it's gone off like twice on the first go round. Zombie, good day to die. Good day to die. I can see why this would be a poor tip. So anyway, we are going to shoot our zombie bad guy. So pull it all the way back. And zombie, good day to die. 